This video is about some of the limitations of test equipment. It corresponds to section 13.5 of Applied Analog Electronics. This whole chapter is about debugging, and test equipment is an important part of debugging because the basic notion of debugging is that you form some expectations about what the system should do, and then you make some observations of the system to see what it actually does. And test equipment is what you do to make those observations. So we have lots of different sorts of test equipment. Uh, you can have an oscilloscope, a voltmeter, if you're looking at digital signals, a logic analyzer, and there's other more esoteric equipment that you might use. But one basic idea that's very important that gets missed a lot by students and by professional engineers is that inserting test equipment changes your circuit. The equipment is never a perfect observer. The act of observing the system changes the system. And this isn't just a sort of philosophical, you know, physics sort of question. This is a real electronics thing. You can actually model your test equipment. For example, the Analog Discovery 2 oscilloscopes that we use have about a one mega ohm resistance and about mm, 25 picofarads or so capacitance. Those that resistance and capacitance in parallel is put into your circuit whenever you attach the oscilloscope to the circuit. Now, if you're looking at the output of an op amp or something like that, where you've got a very low impedance voltage source there, the oscilloscope's not going to make the slightest bit of difference to what you measure. But if you're looking at something that's a very low current thing, very high impedance source, then the one mega ohm resistance of the oscilloscope, or at high frequencies, the 25 picofarads, which may have a much smaller impedance, can make a huge difference to how your circuit behaves. And so you need to be aware of that, that there are times when just connecting up your measurement instrument changes your circuit enough to change its behavior. And a lot of students have gotten caught with that in some of the uh, experiments we've done where we do in fact have sensors which have a very high output impedance. You try to measure that directly and the oscilloscope is changing what's happening. Okay, that's one thing to worry about is what's the impedance of your measuring instrument? How does that change your circuit? That's not the only thing that can be going wrong, though. When we use the Teradac data acquisition system, where we're taking the input pins of the analog-to-digital converter on the TCLC, those have very high input impedance. So you'd say, oh, they're not going to change my circuit by much. I mean, we're talking now not about mega-ohms, but about hundreds of mega ohms shouldn't make any difference uh, except for unfortunately that's not true um, let's take a look at the model that we sometimes have to use for those inputs basically we've got our analog to digital converter and inside the uh, TCLC, there's some switches and stuff. That Because there's only one analog to digital converter and it gets shared among many different pins. So there's multiplexing switches and other things that are there. What happens is that there's basically electrical noise generated inside the TCLC chip that's capacitively coupled to this analog to digital converter pin. So if our circuit externally has got a high uh, output impedance, so there's a large, the R circuit here, if that's a large resistance, then what we're seeing at the analog to digital converter is going to be a combination of what's the VN that we actually want to be measuring and this noise that's coming from inside the chip. And that can throw the measurement off. In fact, if you disconnect um, any input to the analog to digital converter. So you just have a floating pin on the TCLC and you look at it with Teradac, you'll see that there's a large 
noisy signal there. In fact, it's a characteristic, gee, if I see a noisy pin on, uh, on Teradac, I go, hey, did you forget to hook up pin A3 there? And they look and go, oh yeah, I hooked up to A4, oops, and move it over. Um, because the noise is very, very measurable by the analog digital converter. What people are not always aware of is that this noise can go out through the circuit. So the noise that's is not just internal to the analog to digital converter. It's there on the pin. And that noise, if you're trying to put it at the input of a high gain amplifier, you're trying to say, well, what's the voltage of the input of this amplifier? The noise that we're putting could get amplified by that amplifier. And that can result in, gee, when I've got this thing hooked up to look at the input, it doesn't behave the same way as when it wasn't looking at the input. That can be a result of, gee, the noise is as big as the signal you were trying to look at. So, basic bottom line here is any test equipment can affect your circuit, and often in unexpected ways. You wouldn't expect that hooking up a data acquisition system to your circuit would inject a lot of noise into your circuit, but it can. Okay, um, what other problems should I warn you about here? Um, ah, one thing you will also notice is quite often you will see, if you're looking at, you know, pin A0 and pin A1 with, uh, with Teradac, that you'll see a small signal on pin A1 that looks like what was on pin A0, but maybe it's a bit noisier, a bit smaller. This is a result of not putting in a signal on A1, and that what you're seeing is that there's a sample and hold on the analog to digital converter, and if you don't put a new signal in, it's still going to have some of the old signal from the previous channel. So what you're seeing on the instrument isn't always what's there outside. It has some memory and stuff. One of the things that you can do to make sure that the Teradac is working the way you want it to, that the analog to digital converters are really measuring what you want them to measure, is to make sure that this R circuit here, this output impedance of whatever it is you're looking at with the analog to digital converter, is small. So you're looking at the output of amplifiers and not at very high impedance things. Make sure you have wires connected to each of the channels that you look at. That you actually have a signal there to look at. Um, that'll help a lot in getting clean data acquisition from Teradac, is keeping the impedance of the things driving the pins there low. Even though the pins themselves are very high impedance, that's not the only thing you need to worry about. Okay, you'll also need low impedance if you're trying to drive the analog discovery too. There you have somewhat different problems. It doesn't inject noise, at least not that I've ever noticed, um, but it does have a much lower impedance than the Teradac. It's got only that one mega ohm uh, input impedance. Okay, so be aware of those sorts of limitations of your test equipment. Be aware that the oscilloscope can't measure tiny voltages because the um, it's only got a limited gain on its input amplifier, and then it does analog to digital conversion with a fixed number of bits in the analog to digital converter. And so you've got a step size of, I think it's something like 50 microvolts. If you're trying to measure a small signal, you may not be able to see it with the oscilloscope. So there it's not a matter of changing your circuit, it's just that the oscilloscope has got a limited resolution. Voltmeter, same problem. Limited resolution, you may not be able to see small signals, even if they're there. Okay, so being aware of the limitations of your test equipment and the fact that they change your circuit when you put them in there is sometimes going to be important when you're doing your debugging.